hello everyone and welcome back to my channel if you're just seeing my face for the very first time hi welcome my name is adora and you are watching life with ada beke so please don't forget to like this video comment share in the comments let me know like what made you click on this video whether you know like just let me know like what interested you was it the thumbnail was it the Top, um, was it the title whatever it was just let me know in the comment section and if you're one of my ogs one of my returners hi welcome you know i love you guys thank you so much for all your support thank you so much for everything that you continue to do and how you continue to like just give me inspiration on this channel i really, really love you guys um as always don't forget to like comment share and watch to the end of this video yes i'm in a classroom i was in a classroom in my last video and i'm in a classroom in this one yes it's the same day okay okay let's get into the video of today <laughs> of discussing the most common questions I get asked. Um, this question comes a lot from my internationals, but everybody, both domestic and international students can benefit from this information. So listen carefully, like stay tuned. I'm going to give you guys the tea, the breakdown, like I will divide everything very, very well. So open your ears and listen very, very carefully. Okay. so. A lot of times I get emails about, hi Adora, I'm from Nigeria, I'm from India, I'm from Pakistan, I'm from, I'm watching you from, you know, Indonesia, wherever. I studied, I have a degree in biochemistry, I have a degree in music, I have a degree in something, you know, in anatomy, and I want to study medicine in the US, can I do it? And I always tell you, yes, but yes but and that but is you need to complete your prerequisite classes in the united states i put out a video and i'm going to link it up here about the what the prerequisite classes are that you need to complete for medical school so please be sure to go watch this video that video what the actual classes are when i say prereqs prereqs that's what i'm referring to so please go and watch that video now the question is how can i complete it right so i mean the the go-to answer right is that you can come to the united states and decide to get another degree you can do that like you can get a degree afresh maybe a biology degree or a health sciences degree anything and it will help you you complete your um, prerequisite um classes and you move on right but there are three other ways three alternatives that sometimes people look at um to complete that degree or three ways that people look at to improve their academic rigor before applying to med school and i'm going to compare them and it's up to you i'm going to compare them on different bases and then it's up to you for you to choose so the three ways are an smp which is a special master's program a post bac or post baccalaureate or a regular master's program smp post bac regular masters so what is an smp an smp is a special masters program that is actually dedicated to people who are trying to get into medical school so a lot of times these smps you still get a masters right like it might be maybe a masters in anatomy and physiology that's the masters but what makes it an smp is that most of people in this degree are trying to go to medical school or some kind of pre-health maybe they're trying to go to pharmacy school or something they're trying to is really get towards people who are trying to go into this professional school and a lot of times the classes that they are taking are classes that you will take in your first year of med school so the whole point of doing an smp is that you are showing an admissions committee that you can meet up to the rigor of med school so that's an smp now a post bac an smp is a master's it's a master's degree that means it's a graduate program a post bac is you have already you already have your bachelor's degree but you are completing classes outside of your bachelor's so it's like a bachelor's pro max 
if that makes sense so you the classes you are doing are still considered on and like it's still considered undergraduate classes however you might be taking those classes because maybe you failed them when you took them initially or your degree was different so you never took them in the first place but you have a degree does that make sense so post back is bachelor's pro max undergraduate pro max <laughs> then a regular master's can be in anything like myself i got a master's in public health so i'm going to compare some of um, these things so the first thing i'm comparing it is cost so i would say that um smps can be quite expensive because it's a master's degree right it's a master's degree there's often no scholarships or anything like that for smps so they can be quite expensive they can you know put a dent in your money additionally masters can also be quite expensive but i think the thing with masters regular masters degree is that you might be able to get graduate funding scholarships all that kind of thing then with post back it depends on the kind of post back you do so you can do post back in two ways you can either decide to do a do it yourself a diy post back this is I know the classes I need to take. I'm just going to take them. You can take them at a community college. You can take them at a four-year university. You can take them, you know, depending on you. But it's just, you know what classes you need to take and you're doing that. Or you can do a structured post-back. Like there are programs some schools have like, oh, we have a post-back that you can do at our school. It's structured. So you're taking this class, you're taking this class and all that. So obviously, like, if you're doing something more structured, it might be more expensive versus if you're doing something where it's like i'm doing it at a community college or i'm taking the classes you know i'm taking two classes a semester. you know that if you if you're doing it yourself you can work your finances out better versus if you're doing it in a structured kind of way then the second thing is the experiences that you would get so in a diy post back there's is your because you're doing it yourself there's no really experiences attached to it any research any um clinical experience you have to find those yourself a lot of times uh smp so the special massage program a lot of them might actually have like mcat tutoring attached to it some of them might have like research experiences attached to it you know they might have like they might come with some more goodies same as structured post back some of these structured post back they might come with mcat attached you know mcat tutoring attached to it some of them might come with research experiences attached to it because it's at a university so they might be pairing you up with mentors or something master's degree is a little bit different it depends on i think it's how you make of it if you're like into research you can find research at your home institution but oftentimes it's not like it's not part and parcel of the program then the next thing i want to talk about is this idea of linkages right so some programs either um, some of these smps or post back programs might actually have like what i call a deal or linkage with a medical school right so some medical schools will partner with smps or post back programs or even some very rare master's degree programs whereby they will say okay if you have students who meet a certain gpa cutoff and a certain mcat cutoff we will automatically accept them into our medical school so that's considered a linkage i.e you don't need to apply to this apply to that it's just an automatic acceptance right so but however you know like when it comes to linkages they might have like a certain number that they accept a year and all these things so all those are individual differences but the good thing about a linkage is that okay you know i just need to hit this gpa this mcat and you work towards that it saves you money on the application um cost of the application in general it saves you some of that stress of oh my god am i going to get into here am i going to get into there so i would say consider linkages the kinds of programs that often have linkages are special master's programs and po some post back programs so i would say like consider programs with linkages i want to talk about like the difference in undergrad versus grad right so like i said ba post backs are bachelor pro max so the, the whatever the classes that you're getting from a post back are considered undergraduate classes however an smp and a master's program are considered graduate classes and that is important because it will appear differently in your transcript if you are trying to increase your gpa like maybe you graduated with a gpa of a three point three or you graduated with a gpa of a three point one or something and you are trying to increase that gpa it would make more sense for you to do a post back 
Does that make sense? Because the post back those post back classes would directly be adding into your undergraduate GPA. If you do a master's or a special master's program, it would be a separate GPA entirely. Your 3.1 would stand on its own and your master's degree GPA would stand on its own. It would be two separate GPAs. So that's something to consider. The fact that one is undergrad and one is grad. So the last thing I want to talk about is the value, the value that you would get from these kind of programs, right? I would say the first, before you jump into a master's degree, consider what, like what, what that master, don't just do a master's degree because you, because you can. I know like there are people who have asked me like, oh, I want to do a master's in public health. Should I do it? And I'm like, is a master's in public health something you actually want to do? Or do you want to do a master's in public health because you think it would look good, right? Because if you're just saying doing it because you think it would look good, don't. You know, but if it's something that you want to do to enrich yourself or you want you really want that like you want that knowledge base you can do it or you can consider doing like an md mph program and that's something i can talk about later like a dual degree program consider the value for an smp right maybe the cost of it might be too much for you like it might come out to be too costly but maybe if you consider the fact that that program has a linkage, you know, the co- you know it might, it might work out for you. So consider like, what value am I getting? Then for post-bac, you might be like, I actually need this post-bac because my undergrad GPA was quite low and I need to improve. So if you want to improve that GPA, like you will consider, should I do a structured post-bac? Maybe I need somebody that is actually telling me, do this, do that, do this, do that. Or am I someone that is more self-sufficient and I don't really need that kind of direction? So I might be able to just do a DIY post back. So these are the things you really, really want to consider when you're comparing an SMP, a post back, and a master's degree. Did I miss anything? Is there something you want to know more about regarding these three programs? Please let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if it requires, I might do a video about it. But thank you so much. And I hope you really, really watched to the end of this video. I remain your girl Adabeke. Don't forget to like this video, comment, share, and most of all subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching till the next time i see you bye mm.